Hi guys, welcome to Live Tutelage. Now here in this session, we are going to discuss of Java classes. Okay, so far we have discussed so many things about Java, the Java features and now we will discuss the main important uh, feature of Java which is classes and objects. Right, classes and objects. Now, what is a class? When I say what is a class, it is nothing but a blueprint. It is a blueprint or I can even say it is, class is a collection of, collection of data types and its methods. Right, data types and its methods. So, I have certain data types, something like integer A. So, if I have some integer A and then I have something called float B and I have a method for addition of these two numbers, I can say the add is a method and when I write it both together and put it in one group and I will give a name as CL, then, then, then I can say that this is a class. This class consists of two data types and one method. Okay. And objects are nothing but instances of class. Objects are nothing but instances of class. If I want to access the variables and the methods of my class, I have to access through my object, which is nothing but a reference variable to your class. Now, so we, we may get a question. So what if suppose I want to add two numbers, why I have to create a class and add it? I can directly add two numbers A plus B and you can print it, right? So now here the reason when we combine both data type and methods and you refer it with one name which is known as a class and you access it through the objects of the class so that what happens means for example I want to add something like 2 comma 1.2, right? 2 and 1.2 and I want to add 3 comma 3.5. And I want to add something like 5 comma some 6.8. Right? So this is an integer and this is a float number. Now if I want to add these two variables. See for example if you observe this. If you want to write a normal program. What do I have to do? I have to store 2 in one variable. And I have to store 1.2 in another variable. And then I have to call the function add. And I have to print it. Now, if I can take 3 and 3.5, I have to store the value of 3 in another variable and 3.5 in another variable. Similarly, in this case also, I need to declare two variables. See, each and every time for the same functionality of addition, I am just calling and I am storing the values in three, the two, 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 six variables, which occupies much space. So, to overcome this, what I am doing is, and I am just having the variables and the methods. So the variables and the methods. Here I am just going to call the values with this three times. Right. So three times I am trying to call in the function. So what happens means in the memory block it creates for the first set of values a comma b it creates some space and it occupies some space and for the add functionality it creates some space. And next again for the set of two values it creates another set of space. So, if it keeps going like this, then there will be a lot of memory wastage. So, to overcome that, what we are doing is, Java has an excellent feature, which combines your data as well as method, combined together, and you can give you a name called class. And if you want to access, if you want to write, if you want to assign the values to A, B, and if you want to write some operation or functionality for your method, you need to go for an object. Because object is nothing but the instances of a class. So through the object you can call, you can just refer your variables. So now let us see the creation of an object. So creation of an object is very simple. Just give class name, space, variable or that variable is known as your object is equal to new class name. Okay, so this is a syntax for creation of any new object. Okay, now we'll just take a simple example and we'll see how this classes and objects works out. So, I'm just creating first a simple class. 
So this is my class. This class is my example class, right? And I just shall say finish. And in this class, see, this is a class. And in this class, I'm just having two variables like integer, something like student number, right? And I can even say <coughs> something like a float student height. Okay. Now I have a method. The method is displaying of these details, say display. Right? So this should be in public keyword. So now this is this is a method and this is these two are the variables. Okay. And for this method, I just have defined some text and tell them, I'll say hi, welcome to write. Now, this is a simple class. Okay, this is a simple class. So, here, uh, we, we should not use our system.out.println. Why? Because this class does not have the main method. So, let us write some written statement for this method. Right. So, now I can say this is my class. This class consisting of data type as well as a method called display. Now, I want to access this for a different set of values through my main. So, let us create one main here. So, just right click and go to the new, new and say class. This is the class main. And here you can check your main method and say finish. Now, this is your class and this is your simple class and this is your the main class. Right. Now, here I want to access, I want to call these values. So, for that what I said, you need to call the values by creating of an object. How to create an object? Class name, space, object name, which is equal to new class name. That means from this what we can observe is, employee class is a class, which is also a method, which creates or which initializes an object. It is simply something like integer a. When I say integer a, what does it mean? a is a type of integer, right? Same as when I say, when the meaning of this particular statement is obj is an object and this object consists of two different data types and one method. See here the observation. You can able to, with integer a, you can able to just create only one variable, right? If you want to create another set of variables, you need to define again float or again int when you are writing a normal program. But here what you did is with only one reference, you are giving an access for this obj for holding the value of integer type, for holding the value of float type and also for having an access to call the method called display. That is about classes. You can have the data types as well as the methods. Now coming to your class now here. Now I want to access these two values. So how you can access it or how you can assign the values. So through your obj dot. See when I say dot you can observe three uh, words here. One is serial number which is of int type and here height which is of float type and display which is of a method returns int value. See here, both three belongs to the same class which is your employee class. Now here with my object code, I can access a serial number is equal to something like one. Right? And I can just say dot height is equal to some, some 14.5 I can give. Right? And now I can display the set of values system dot out dot println Okay, the obj dot s number. Okay, now in another statement, I can just print. obj dot height. 
right right now so java does not support the float data type you can just give the double okay this is double now i'm going to call the function and i'm going to have the result in variable a integer a okay and for this integer a i'm just calling with object dot that method display right the method display returns an integer type of value and that value is stored into this particular variable a right now i'm going to say system dot out dot println of a right now let us run the program and see what happens let us run your main program so you can observe here the values of serial number 1 and it is printing the value of height which is you have assigned 14.5 and the value which is written through the function what is that function 2 into 3 which is 6 right so this is how you can access the objects of a particular class so now what is the reason of going of creation of these objects that means i can create n number of objects like this okay i can have object comma i can even say object 1 comma i can even say object 3 comma right so i can have n number of objects like this i can create and i can assign for obj1 i can even, i can also have serial number and height see for example if i say that obj1 dot see here again the same values is been displayed height serial number and display right so i can have this three uh, kind of objects i can have for the three three object references i can have integer double as well as a method right so when i create object and object in object 3 it will not create the memory for three objects it creates the memory for only one object and it gives a references to your class and it occupies and it specifies or it refers to these variables when i say object 1 when i say object 1 the same object 1 also comes and refers to your class will not create any any memory space in the memory okay if i have integer a integer b something like this if i have something like integer a right again comma b comma c then in this case what happens the memory is allotted for type in for three variables but here in this case it is only the references n number of objects you can create and for the n number of objects you can access these three values that is the advantage of your classes and objects thank you